I thank Dr. B.K. Arora, Dr. Salil Bhargav, and Dr. Ashok Bajpai for having me here with you for NatCon 2020. It's always a pleasure. You matter because you are you. You matter to the last moment of your life, and we will do all we can, not only to help you die peacefully, but to live until you die. Few things a doctor does are more important than relieving pain or breathlessness. Palliative procedures for stage four lung cancer are many of late interventional pulmonology has become a big player. And then of course, surgery. Another purpose of surgery is to improve the response to other treatments such as chemotherapy and radiotherapy, molecular targeted agents and immune checkpoint inhibitors increasing their efficiency and prolonging survival free of cancer progression. This can be addressed in hemoptysis, BPF, malignant pleural or, or pericardial effusions, chest wall tumor invasion, pulmonary metastasis, stage four lung cancer. The end thing these days in surgery. We should all be aware of Karnofsky performance status scale. Anything above 50, we are in business. In hemoptysis, when radiotherapy or embolization fails, in a healthy patient, lung resection can cure or stop the hemoptysis effectively. When tumor necrosis occurs, it can rupture and cause an empyema infecting the pleural cavity. Here in, we are inside the pleural cavity, inside the ruptured tumor necrotic area that's been sucked out, instill saline into the cavity to find out where the leak is. Ask our friends across the table, the anesthetists to kindly ventilate the collapsed lung. Here, as you can see, the saline has been installed and there large bubbles can be seen coming from that opening, just like how we identify a puncture in a flat tire. BPFs could be as big as three to five millimeters. Another area is chest wall excision and reconstruction. This could be due to lung cancer directly invading the chest wall or primary or metastatic chest wall tumors and often a sequelae of radiotherapy to the chest causing osteoradio necrosis. Here we see an osteosarcoma excised along with the ribs and the defect is covered with methyl metacrylate mesh. These days, ribs are being replaced by titanium alloy rib prosthesis. Moving on to stage four with median survival rates. Let's have a quick look. M1, A, B, C. Normally, they'll survive only for two to 10 months with non-surgical treatments. In M1A, that is separate tumor nodule in contralateral lung, tumor with pleural or pericardial nodules, or malignant pleural or pericardial effusion. We get actually, when treated with no other morbidities or spread, 22.5 months, as opposed to two to 10 months. And similarly, single extrathoracic metastasis, 17.8 months, a year and a half. Malignant pleural effusion, often seen by all of you. Remember, the goal is to eliminate space for fluid to reaccumulate to prevent another procedure. Repeat thoracosynthesis is only done where short life is expected. You can use tar gliomycin doxycycline, but that gives you almost 100% success with no recurrence in most cases. Importantly, treatment delayed is treatment denied we have to move in at the right time large heart not a good sign not a good prognosticator here you see a, a large massive pericardial effusion along with multilocally pleural effusions and ischemia areas 
obtained by using cautery, a nick is given on the pericardium, and all the fluid is drained out. Flimsy adhesions are broken between the pericardium and the heart, and this nick is made into a big window, allowing fluid from the pericardial cavity to drain to the pleural cavity, which is an amazing power to absorb. Excision done anterior to the phrenic nerve and posterior causes and leads to a pericardiectomy. This was a cardiac tamponade. Fortunately, we had not gone into the ventricle and this was completely relieved. Moving on to another aspect is traditionally patients with pleural dissemination have not been considered for surgical resection because survival has been extremely poor with a median survival of four months and five years survival of 3.1%. Of 3 In certain cases, isolated cases, surgical treatment patients where pleural disease was de detected at the time of thoracotomy. Incidentally, we found that the five-year survival rate was 25.3%. Point to ponder, 3% versus 25.3%. A classical case, pet shoulder lesion, hardly any pleural thickening was seen. And when we went in, we resected the lesion, and this was a thickened pleura. As you can see, it turned out to be the malignant. And this was excised too. The take home point would be patients with pleural effusion and N0 or N1 disease had a significantly better prognosis with a five year survival rate of 63.6% .6 than patients with N2 or N3 disease. So, N0, N1, I, and a resectable lesion surgery should be considered. Let's jump on to pulmonary metastasis. We are all well aware breast, colon, rectal cancers, if they have a solitary metastasis in lung, resect it, and the actuarial five and 10 survive, year survival rates are 36 and 26%. As opposed to when, let's look, that, look at that, at the reverse psychology, reverse logic. We have here, earlier we saw a lung lesion being removed as a secondary from a primary in the colon or breast. The other way around, primary in the lung and a solitary synchronous spread. Medical management, survival rate, eight months. Surgical, 29 months. Two-year survival, 25% for medicine, medical management, 65%, three times almost with surgical management. Reset the primary lesion, as well as take off the secondary. Five year survivals of 21% was 8%. Interestingly, the influence of the result is much by media stimulant nodes. No media stimulant nodes, excellent results. And a similar result is seen with larger tumors. T1 and T2, better results than T3, T4. If the secondary is in the kidney, brain, and adrenal, excellent prognosis. Types of resection could be wedge, or it could be a segmentectomy, or a mass lesion, or with a lobectomy. Pneumonectomies are rarely done. This is a case to elaborate the point primary in the lung, secondary in the liver, taste was postponed, and strands arterial catheter embolization for this, and the left lower lobe, and the left upper lobe was removed with excellent results. So for the subset of patients with NSCLC, T1 to 2, N0, 1, M1, or CT3, N0, M1, surgery increased five-year survival for patients with oligometastasis to the brain to 10 to 20%, and 25% for patients with isolated metastasis to the adrenal gland. A very heartening case, we went in for palliation, this turned out to be the size of a baby, an infant inside the chest wall, inside the pleural cavity of a patient. He was condemned to die. Pleural liposarcoma, an extremely rare condition. So finally, surgery is useful for hemoptysis, BPF, 
chest wall resection and reconstruction should be considered for both curative as well as palliative intent. Following window in malignant pericardial effusions, recurrence rarely occurs. Similar is the case with VATS in malignant pleural effusions. Moving early, time is essence. Of course, pulmonary metastasectomy, as we have seen, it gives you very good prognosis. And what is most exciting, patients with malignant pleural effusion who are in N0 or N1, that's M1A, may be candidates for definitive surgical resection if complete resection can be achieved. For stage four disease, five-year survival rate is four to six percent. This could go up to 30 to 50 percent with a curative intent in selected patients. Surgical resection is a great boon. I shall leave you with these lasting images wherein surgery gives you not only hope, but there is definite light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you so much.